Hi, I finally caved in and went ahead and bought a case for the RD6012W. So today we will put everything in and finishing up the project. As you recall, I used a couple of power bricks along with the RD6012W and built a lab power supply that way instead of buying one of those off the shelf switching power supply modules for the RD6012W. But without a case, it really wasn't that practical for everyday use. Now, I could have 3D printed one, but uh, given that the power supply could get pretty warm during the operation, it might not be the best idea for the PLA material. Anyway, here's a trick. The case I bought here is actually for the RD6006W, and for whatever reason, it is significantly cheaper. In fact, it's only at half the price. I bought this uh, on sale recently, and it went even cheaper. Now, the interesting thing is, as I mentioned before, the height and width for this case for the entire RD series are identical, so this case should fit the RD6012W without a problem. Now, of course, the content that came with these uh, cases are different, and this one has fan, has fan controller, which uh, the RD1260-12 does not have. And of course, the crimped cables, are numbers are different as well. So this one does not have as many as the other one. But that's something you can easily do it yourself if you have the time and tools and save you some money. Because we're dealing with custom power bricks, I'm not going to use the supplied hardware anyway. So as you can see here, I have already mounted a couple of pieces here inside a case. Now these are just from the junk bin and I found, and they happen to be able to fit in the power supply. And these two pieces fit in the original mounting holes as well. So I didn't have to drill any more holes, which is uh, great because I could always take them off in the future and uh, swap in different stuff. So the plan here is to have these uh, two power bricks that I used for the power supply, uh, stack them up and uh, sandwich them in here. And now after I close on the case, I can put some padding material on top and everything should be secured down pretty uh, neatly here. Now, of course, the only downside is that these power bricks are stacked up here and uh, the heat might not be able to escape as easily as it should. That should not be a huge problem though, as uh, most of the time the power supply would not be running under load. And even when it's under load, I tested it before, the power bricks never got warm to the touch. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm not planning to uh, put the fan on. And we'll see if it can operate without the fan. If it is okay, then I'm gonna leave the fan out. But uh, if it gets too warm, I may in the future put this uh, fan controller in and the fan in just to add some additional circulation here. So that should be pretty straightforward. Now let me put everything in this case and uh, we'll get it going. One thing I just realized is that uh, this is a metal case and we have a Wi-Fi module right there. So once we enclose this case, it's gonna be shielded. So I'm not sure how well that Wi-Fi is gonna work. Now, of course, it's possible that it relies on the front panel here to uh, let the signal out. So we'll have to see that once we put everything in. One thing I realized is we do have this earth wire, but we don't have a spot on the case that is actually has exposed metal. So we have to send something off and uh, I will put this wire on. Now, of course, the supplied tools and the screws does not have a shake proof washer and the screw. So I have to find it myself. But uh, my plan is to uh, use one of the fan mounting screws to mount that earthen wire here. Okay, sandpaper and knife didn't quite work, but there's nothing a Dremel cannot do. So you can see that is nice and clean. So now we're gonna mount this screw on here. And let's see if we get a continuity to the case here. 
so this screw here should be fine and uh, let's take a look here yep no problem at all Okay, so it looks like everything crammed in pretty nicely. And of course, we just have this uh, temperature probe that I need to figure out what to do with it. Now, it's interesting that this unit actually can, you can use the temperature probe when you are charging the battery, but it's clearly not very well designed because once you put everything in the case, obviously we're not gonna be able to take this out. So I think for now, I'm going to mount this temperature probe somewhere uh, between these uh, two power supplies so that we can get a, a little bit of a temperature reading. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, these things never get hot. So really it's just to make sure that we don't let this uh, flopping around inside. So let me do that and we'll be right back. Okay, that looks good enough. So before I put everything back together, I'm going to power it up, just make sure that we didn't goof up anything here. So let me plug in the power supply. I mean the power cable here and let's take a look. Yep, everything looks like it's working. So let's uh, just everything works as expected okay so let's uh, just look around one more time to make sure we didn't lose leave anything loose inside the power supply and uh, make sure everything is secured as we can see that these power brakes are not going anywhere and all i'm going to do is i'm going to put on a piece of foam here and then we can put the case back on so that should be very secure and let's do that right now And there we go. And uh, I can press it down a little bit so it's not gonna go anywhere. That is perfect. And as you can see, there is some alignment issues, uh, but uh, I, we should be able to fix that pretty quickly. And by the way, I just gave it a quick test and uh, I was able to actually connect using Bluetooth and controlling this unit with my cell phone, as you can see here. And I was a little bit concerned at the beginning as the case is metal. I was afraid the Bluetooth somehow the signal can be blocked by this case. But I guess, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the front end should be wide open. Now, as I mentioned last time, the app has a little bit of issue. You can only use it with a 2.4 gigahertz router, not a 5 gigahertz router that I have at home. So I had, had to actually switch it to 2.4 gigahertz. Now that pretty much concludes the video and I'm pretty satisfied with this case. And I'm sure this power supply would be used a lot in the coming videos. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and share. I will catch up with you next time.